If you want some bass in your car, but you don't have room for a large subwoofer, then I have got a solution for you. This right here is a Kicker preloaded subwoofer enclosure. Now they come in different sizes from a six and three quarter all the way up to a 12 inch. This happens to be the 10 inch model. They also offer a down firing version. Now you probably noticed that the cones seem to be a little bit mismatched. That's because it's not just a single subwoofer. It's a subwoofer plus a passive radiator. Now a passive radiator works a lot like a port. I'll explain more about that later, so make sure you stick around. Inside of the box, you'll find an info page that tells you about the enclosure along with a sticker. There's also a wedge-shaped piece of cardboard packing material. Wait, don't throw that away. <laughs> There's some mounting hardware taped to the back of it. You might need that to secure your enclosure in your vehicle. Now it's time for the big reveal. Let's pull the box off and see what this thing looks like. Now, of course, it is wrapped in plastic to protect it from moisture damage during shipping. Whenever I review something like this, I always like to include some hard data in the review. So I'm gonna grab my laptop and my dats and I'm gonna run a sweep on this thing to try to find the tuning frequency. If you build your own speakers, I strongly recommend that you pick up a dats. I'll give you a link to one down in the video description. So what the DATS does is it runs an impedance sweep and it gives you this plot. And the first thing that I notice is that this plot looks pretty much like what you would expect for a ported enclosure. That is because a passive radiator behaves like a port. The passive will resonate as the subwoofer plays and that resonance will actually increase the bass. More on how that works a little later in the video. But before we do that, I've got something kind of cool to show you. In fact, I've already shown it to you. Kicker actually sells the passive radiators separate from these enclosures. So if you wanted to build your own passive radiator style enclosure, you can just order these from someplace like Crutchfield. Now these have some pretty cool features on them. They look a lot different than a regular passive radiator. Most of the time a passive radiator is gonna be just like a subwoofer, only it's missing the voice coil and the magnet. In other words, it's still gonna have the frame and a basket attached to the back of it and there'll still be a spider attached to the basket. But these kick it up a notch and get rid of the basket and the spider and all you're left with is the frame, the cone, the surround, and the weights on the back of the cone. The missing frame and spider doesn't impact the performance at all. In fact, you actually want a softer suspension on a passive radiator, so getting rid of the spider is probably a good idea. Now, one thing that is missing on this that's usually found on most passive radiators, most passive radiators will have some threads in the back so that you can screw in some weights and that's so you can tune the passive radiator. Now, Kicker specifically designed these to pair with either a Comp R or a Comp RT subwoofer inside of an enclosure with a known volume. The eight inch is designed to tune a 0.4 cubic foot enclosure. The 10 inch is designed to tune a half cubic foot enclosure. And the 12 inch is designed to go into a 0.7 cubic foot enclosure. Now there's a common myth that you need two of these passives for every active driver. But as you can see from this enclosure, there's only one passive for each active driver. And that's because that common myth is a myth. <laughs> What you actually need is you need the passive to be able to displace twice the air that the active could potentially displace. One way to do that is for your passive to have double the X max as your active. And so these kickers are again designed to pair up with their Comp R and Comp RT subwoofers and they have plenty of X max built into them. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back to the DATS results we talked about earlier. This enclosure looks to be tuned to about 45 hertz. Now, Kicker did some testing on their channel and they showed that their 12 inch enclosure is tuned to around 38 or 40 hertz. So 45 hertz for the 10 inch enclosure is perfectly in line with what Kicker showed on their channel. Now that's tuned a bit on the high side for my taste. I prefer to tune my enclosures a little bit lower than 45 hertz. But what you've got to remember is with a small enclosure, we have some engineering limitations. As the enclosure gets smaller, it becomes increasingly difficult to tune the enclosure lower. And as the enclosure gets smaller, it becomes more difficult to play low and loud at the same time. 
That's a concept called Hoffman's Iron Law. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. To get an idea of just how compact this enclosure is, here are some side-by-side -side shots with an enclosure that I built last summer. This is a 2.5 cubic inch net enclosure. So that means it's 2.5 cubic inches of internal airspace after you account for the bracing and the port and the subwoofer displacement inside the enclosure. This enclosure is tuned to 34 hertz, and so it's got a big port wrapping around the inside of it that's taking up a lot of space as well. And the driver is a Kicker Comp R12. The drivers in these enclosures are the thin versions of the Comp R, the Comp RT. What you've got to keep in mind is that these enclosures were built for entirely different purposes. The larger box is actually a tad bit bigger than what Kicker recommends. This box is oversized in order to get more output, and it's tuned lower than Kicker recommends in order to play lower. It's a no compromises, get loud, get low subwoofer box. Now it's just a single 12 on 500 watts, and so it's not gonna do it like hair tricks or anything like that, but you can really feel this thing moving the air. So the 12 inch regular size subwoofer in this huge box is really gonna outperform the thin subwoofer inside of this compact enclosure. But raw performance is not always the most important thing. Sometimes space is the most important thing. So this enclosure is made for somebody that can't give up their trunk room. Or maybe you need to fit this behind the seat of a regular cab pickup truck or under the back seat in an extended cab pickup truck. So knowing all those design and engineering limitations, the question then becomes how much bass can this thing put out and what's it sound like? Well, before we do a sound test, why don't we go ahead and crack it open, take a good look at the enclosure and see how it's built. Now you will notice there are no screw holes on the front of these subwoofers. That's because Kicker hides their screw holes behind these little stickers right here. Whenever I get an enclosure like this in for review, I always like to take it apart for two reasons. One, I like taking things apart. Who doesn't? It's cool to know what's going on on the inside of these things. And two, you as just a regular consumer who's not making YouTube videos, you're not gonna take it apart. You're gonna put it in your car and you're gonna play music and you just have to kind of hope that it's built well. So one of the things I do as a service to you is I take these things apart and risk tearing them up in the process. Now the first thing I noticed when I was pulling out these screws is these are not wood screws, these are machine screws. That's a really good thing. That means that Kicker has used either a T-nut or a threaded insert or some other type of fastener inside of the enclosure. I wasn't able to get in and actually see what they were using because it's such a slim little enclosure. But this is a really cool thing if you find yourself having to take the subwoofer in and out a lot. The other thing that I noticed when I was pulling the driver out is that this enclosure is just absolutely gorgeous. The carpet lines are flawless and the stitching on the logo is really sharp. Kicker did a fantastic job giving you that look that you want when you go out and drop a bunch of money on a subwoofer box. Okay, let's pull the driver out and see what we have on the inside. The first thing that I noticed is we've got some polyfill around the edges. The polyfill is there to help break up standing waves and it will improve sound quality. The speaker wires are wrapped with phone tape. Again, that's a sound quality thing. You're not gonna hear the speaker wires rattling up against the various components inside of the enclosure. I'm not sure what size the wire is, but it looks like maybe 14 gauge or so. That's plenty thick for the amount of power this thing is designed to handle. Inside the enclosure, we've got a nice heavy duty brace in the middle of the enclosure, and there's bracing around the edges of the enclosure as well. So from a box construction standpoint, I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. This box is built the way that I prefer to build my boxes. And I wanna say thank you to Kicker for sending out this enclosure because I wouldn't necessarily wanna take it apart if I had spent my own money on it. So Kicker, thank you very much for sending this out. And while I'm saying thank you to people, I wanna thank all of my patrons for their contributions to my channel with a special shout out to my $25 patrons, Dylan, Bo, and Baba. Well, let's... Hook it up and see how it sounds. Now going into it, I don't have really high expectations. When you have a small enclosure, you can either play low or loud, but not both. If you wanna play both low and loud, then you need a really big enclosure. And that's Hoffman's Iron Law in a nutshell. But more on that later. The enclosure is wired at two ohms. The amp I'm using can only give about 350 watts of clean power at two ohms, so I'm underpowering this just a little bit. 
And as you can see here on this portable handheld amp dyno, your daily driver playing just regular music isn't going to see anywhere near the amount of power the amplifier could potentially put out. I don't think I ever saw it get above about 180 watts before it fell over from the vibration. <laughs> I recommend that you go with a bigger amplifier. You want to use at least 400 watts RMS certified on a subwoofer like this. These kicker subwoofers can easily handle their rated power. Probably wouldn't hurt to juice it up just a little bit more. But you want to hear how it sounds too. And so I've got some copyright free music that YouTube provided. Let's, let's see what you think. Now, I've done several passive radiator builds on my channel, and every time I show the passive radiator playing, people always tell me that the passive is out of phase with the active. And that's only slightly true. The reality is that our eyes don't move fast enough for us to tell if two speakers are out of phase when they're playing bass frequencies. You'd have to slow the footage down to a near stop, like one frame a second or something like that in order to confirm that the cones are moving in opposite directions at the same time. What you're actually seeing is a combination of two things. The first thing is this passive has more X max than the active, so the cone is moving more. And the second thing that you're seeing is the passive resonating at different frequencies. In fact, if you're playing right at the tuning frequency, the active cone won't be moving very much at all, and the passive cone is doing all the work. And at that tuning frequency, the active and the passive passive are actually perfectly in phase, but the passive is one cycle behind the active. At any other frequency, the two are slightly out of phase, but again, you're not going to be able to see it. A ported subwoofer enclosure literally works the exact same way, you just can't see it moving because it's air. So uh, this little guy performed a whole lot better than I thought it would. I was kind of expecting a dud and I was a little bit nervous about making the video, especially after Kicker was nice enough to send this out to me. I can assure you that the 10 inch model definitely punches above its weight. Here are some shots of the Kicker enclosure next to some other small passive radiator enclosures that I've built on my channel. And the Kicker enclosure, although it's roughly the same size as these, outperforms them by a considerable margin. Both of these are using six and a half inch subwoofers and eight inch passive radiators and the extra cone area of the 10 inch driver makes a pretty big difference. The thing is, Kicker's been building enclosures like this literally longer than I've been alive. So they've had plenty of time to work the kinks out and they know what they're doing. As far as recommendations go, I'm always leery about providing recommendations. People's tastes and preferences and their needs vary quite widely. I like to present information and then let you decide what you want to do with your own money. If you're trying to get some bass into a tight spot, this is the way to go. You just have to realize that it's not going to perform as well as a similar subwoofer in a huge enclosure. My advice would be to go ahead and step up to the 12 inch model if you have the space. The extra cone area, the slightly larger enclosure, and the extra power handling is going to give you just a little bit more bass. The other thing that I recommend is that you consider getting two of them, especially if you need to step down to the eight inch or the six and three quarter inch model. Even though it's really well designed, you can't get past Hoffman's Iron Law. To learn more about Hoffman's Iron Law, click on this video right here. To learn more about how passive radiators work, click on this video right down here. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you'd hit this button right here and subscribe.